Okay, now I'm going to sneak up on Mary and see what she's up to today. So. Hi, Mary. Hi, Deb. How are you? I'm good. What you doing? Well, we have a lot of castings here to clean up. Sterling silver, white gold, a matching um, piece of this white gold. Whoops, wrong side. Matching piece of this white gold ring. Oh, that's pretty. And then a yellow gold ring. And Eric here is going to do some of the finish work for us. What we call pre-finishing, which is getting a ring or a casting ready to be set with the gems. And there's particular steps that we go through with particular tools. And one of the concepts that's super important is matching the tool to the task. And what that really means is using a tool that is efficient and lets you move forward in the process rather than having to backtrack and waste time. So the tool has to, to match the contour of the ring and the amount of coarseness or aggress aggression that you want in your tool. So if we started with this ring, well, let's start with this ring. This is a casting. Debbie cast it and it was cut off the sprue. And where it was cut off are two little areas of extra material that we don't really need. So how are you going to get rid of it? You could use a saw and cut it or you could just go in with a big file and get rid of that material quickly and flatten the area using your bench pin to support your work on with long flat strokes. There. So you just do that for a while until you get it to this stage. So this has already been filed pretty flat. Um, so make sure it's got a nice long strokes to get your... Yeah, you can see the reflection on uh, in the video even that it's a nice long flat shank. So your tool is doing its job. The tool's doing the job. Uh, you don't want short little strokes or cross it. You want to go with the length of the metal. <clears throat> so, if you're going to take this ring and finish it, the next step, you want that off? Yeah. There. Let's go. Yeah. The next step, um, I've discussed this with Eric. Eric, where do we go next? Um, finish on the inside. Make sure that the ring is the correct size. Round it if it still needs rounded. Put that in my handle there. That one. And so if we're going to um, round this ring, check for the correct size. I think this is supposed to be a seven and a half. It is. Why? It's nowhere near a seven and a half. I'm going to have to double check that one. But for example, if it were to be a seven and a half and you're pretty far off, you could actually go in with a hammer and tap up the back side and the sides a little bit to uh, create. And actually, I would do it here, holding it like this. I'm hammering on the corners, on both sides of the corners, and then on the outside of the corner. So like a little V. I'm hammering here, here here and here before I hammer in the middle because I don't want to thin this out any more than I need to and I've got extra material on my European shank corners. So I would go in and give it some hammering there and there as needed. Um, then you're going to have to go back in and flatten those areas. Nice little strokes. You can, if it's only out of round, you can do that with a mallet, a rubber mallet, a nylon mallet, leather, and then you don't have to have all these tool marks. Okay, so I've finished that. So the next thing is to go to the inside of the ring and finish it. And the reason we do that is because the inside is ultimately going to get a quality stamp and a branding stamp, a trios and a 14 karat. So when you go in and hammer that, you're going to mark the outside of the ring with an impression of what you're hammering onto. So then you have to go back and clean up the flat spot. 
So, in order to not backtrack, let's find a check. <clears throat> we won't go through every step completely, but I'm just going to use a drum sander. It's what? Let's see the grid on that one. Um, it's a medium to fine. Yeah, okay. You could go coarser uh, to start with, but the inside of this is not bad, and this is gold. It's going to come away quickly. And I'm just going to use my optimizers. Some people would use a tapered um, sanding um, flap thing like that. I kind of like big sanding drums, but they're, they're hardier. Big. They're hardier. Yeah. It's a bigger uh, diameter, so you can get around the ring quicker using the long stroke. Flip it around. Go back around. So you do that basically until it's nice on the inside. Uh, you can then go to the finer grit of this, and then to um, let's go to this little um, sanding flap thing because it is nice and fine. Uh, the official name is the inside ring flapper. That's it, inside ring flapper. So you go in there and do the same thing. Nice long strokes, rotate the ring. And so you have a really nice satin finish that you like. Uh, you could also knock your corners off a little bit to enhance your comfort fit, but I do that a little bit later. So then you would go in with your um, stamps, and I'm not going to you know, worry about that, you know how to stamp that. And um, you put this in, use it on a, uh, not here, you would use a different, okay, so you do that. We're not going to use those. So, now you're ready to do the outside of the ring. What do you do? Well, you look at it, and you say, what can I do with a file? first. Let's get in on this guy because there is some nice lines. There's a nice channel in there, groove, and a step down. That's part of the design of the ring. You don't want to make it too big or too small, or you want you definitely want to make sure you get in there and clean it out. Nice concave side on the other side. So there's going to be a lot of handwork on this because of the concave areas and the grooves. Those all have to be hand worked. And those are basically closer to the center of the ring, so I would do those first. Because mm -hmm. if you go back to the outside um, of the circumference of the ring, then and you have to go back in, and then you'll make tool marks. You have to come back out and re-clean up the outside. So what would I do? I'm going to look at Pick that. a side. Uh, unfortunately, with these concaves, you have to go in with rubber wheels. It's just, there's really no way around it. I'm getting seasick here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was me. I was trying to... But first, if you're, if you're lucky, you can go in with um, a little bit of your sanding disc and do some of the work. So, so let's... Yeah, sometimes I use the inside ring flapper for that. Concave oh, well, let's area. try that. Okay, the inside ring flapper. Uh, yeah. Because you can make the, the, the roll. It has a flexible this. end a little bit. Yeah. So what you do is go in, and I'm going to come into this concave area with long feathering strokes using the contour. Now, this contour matches really well, this concave area. See yeah. that? Yeah. Okay, exactly. that, that was a great suggestion. So we're going to come in. I don't want to lose any of my line definition. I'm just going to come right up to that nice edge of the um, that center spine and come up here. But long feathery strokes so that you don't create any additional divots or low spots. You're going to the level of the lowest imperfection. Now, I want to make a point of showing how your hands are bracing against each other oh, yeah. when you're doing this. So you have total control of the pressure you're putting on your ring. That's true. Um, I'm in control <laughs> for once. And um, 
I am bracing. I'm bracing on my bench pin, I'm bracing my elbow, and I'm bracing, bracing your fingers. Bracing my fingers. Yeah. Now my the center area has a divot in there, and I need to see if I can get to the bottom of that. So I'm going to feather back and forth a little bit. Never stay in one place. Oh yeah, see it's going away. It's pretty good. I'm going to turn around and come at it from the other direction. That'll give you access to a different part of the curve. I'm going to come up to the top edge. There's a pit there. I want to just move it right through. Okay. I'm pleased with that. So again, we're looking at the reflection of the light to find any flat spots or irregular surfacing. There, there are some little pits yeah. um, or little low spots, but um, this is no longer the appropriate tool. Okay. There's a point where it's like stops working and you have to work it too hard. So you're going to, I would go to a rubber wheel next. And so um, wherever I put that. Because then you can match your contour perfectly. Yeah, you mar match your contour again. Where my rubber wheel went, there's one. So then you do that on the other side over there. But let's work on these grooves. Oops, your toe. I got my handy dandy blundy boots on so that didn't hurt a bit. <laughs> I'm going to go right down the center of these grooves with this. Just uh, with your saw blade just to clean up and make a nice crisp line. At the very bottom. And that yeah. way you can see if there's a pit down there that's hiding. And there's this is very thick area. You can go pretty far with it. And there's nothing hiding in that one. This one's curvy, but I'm going to give it a try because the saw blade's a little bit flexible. So I'm going to start at the top half of the groove and just feather down. That looks pretty good too. There's going to be a diamond up there, and I'm going to put a hole in up at the top of this flared channel. So that part doesn't have to be too handy dandy, but this other part. Now I'm going to start part way down the channel. See if I can just feather right down it. This is a little tricky, so you might not want to do it in this method. Now right down at the very bottom of the channel, there's a little nipple of gold. I'm going to just cut right through that. You could use a file, you could use a burr. Separating disc. Separating disc. Yeah. But I'm here with this tool, and this is one of your best tools for all sorts of things. Okay, so there. So I know there's no pits hiding in my channel. Okay, so now I would go in with could go with a separating disc. I'm going to go in with this little the brownie brownie. Now if it's not sharp, go in with a stone or a dedicated something that you sharpen with. I use an old file and sharpen this to a nice knife edge. So come in, feathering it down. Matching the angle and the tool to the to the groove. If you don't keep that knife edge established, you'll end up widening your little groove and you know making it less distinct. Rounding it out. Yeah. So every so often I'll go in and resharpen that edge. not too bad. I see a spot over here that needs some help. Always moving. Not too bad. Let's look at this little muggy here. I'm checking against the silhouette here so that I can see if my knife edge is still adequate, which it seems to be. You see how that grabbed and wanted to go into my finger? Mm -hmm. Yeah, watch that. <laughs> see, there it goes again. But keep your pressure going down. Okay, I like it. To go in here and so that I can do. I don't have to do with this little tool. I can do that with a sanding disc. So don't do more with a little tool than you need to. Right? 
You're only using little tools for little places. When you can use a bigger tool, you'll take away more metal. So now, let's try the sanding disc. And then now you can come in and... Ah, okay, so this whole curve here on the outside... Mm, I'm gonna get, let me get in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this whole curve out here, we're gonna take the sanding disc, and I put the sand away from, or toward the shaft, Yeah. not out here, because you have way, way more control. If you're trying to do this versus this, way more control with this. So you can come in here, feather this in. You can make terrible divots with this device, this little sanding disc. So keep it moving, keep it feathering. Always. That is one of my all-time go-to tools. I love the sanding disc. I use it a lot, but you got to use it wisely because you can put these horrible ruts and everything. So keep long stroke, moving, overlapping stroke. Again, notice how she's using her hands. She's bracing and pulling. We're pushing. Moving the ring around. Oh, there's a little spot there. <laughs> okay, so this whole little area here, I'm just going to come right in. Moving. So this side is concave, and we didn't really use the inside ring flapper. Let's see how far we get with standing this. I'm going to come up this way. And then I'm going to feather right into this and see where we go. Now the danger is it doesn't match my curve. So I'm kind of hitting a place where it's not being super effective. So I would not do too much. But I'm going to try to get that pit out right there. I'm going to just kind of Go in with it to see if I have to go fill that pit or if it's surfaced enough. When it's surfaced enough, it is gone. Okay, good. But it's gone at the expense of making that concave area a little deeper than it was. So now you go back in with, I would do a rubber wheel and um, feather it all back in with this and come in. Vroom, vroom, move, move, move. Now, one thing we didn't do, and you could do on any flat surface out here, is your sanding stick, which is actually way better and safer than a sanding disc. Because you can just go like that on a nice flat plane and stay in control with nice long strokes and control, control. And it's just it's done. Okay, this back here where it was filed, those are big file marks. And you can just come right in here, and it's not a file, so you can go back and forth, right? And nice long strokes, and then and that's done. Go to another grid. Nice long strokes, and that's done. And then go to a finer grit if you want, or to the triple E wheel. Nice. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah. That was lickety split. Cool. Okay. So, do you feel uh, like we've covered most of the um, highlights of that list? Uh, yeah. Okay. Then, Mr. Eric.